Hello learners! Welcome to Magkat on Corner. In this video, our lesson is about freedom of the human person. Freedom is a fundamental right inherent in human beings. It is one of the natural rights that cannot be taken away from us, hence unalienable. Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights also acknowledges the freedom of every human person as it states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Freedom of the human person can be understood in two contexts. One, in political and social context, and two, in a philosophical context. We will discuss first freedom in a philosophical context. Philosophers viewed freedom as the ability to make choices in life and perform those choices and that every human person has the capacity to act and exert control over his or her behavior. On this view, it was claimed that freedom of choice is the basic characteristics of a person. This capacity to choose distinguishes him or her from all other animals, whereby human is considered as a rational animal according to Aristotle. As a rational animal, human person is a creative being, endowed with free will and with the right to determine his or her life. On this premise, human freedom is expressed in two ways, free will and free action. How are these two expressions being different from each other? Free will is the capacity to choose from alternative courses of actions or decisions, while Free action is the freedom to perform an action without any obstacles or hindrances. Again, free will is the capacity to choose, while free action is the freedom to perform. Free will is also defined as the power of acting or not acting according to the determination of the will and to the moral reasoning, while free action is also called as physical freedom or the absence of any physical restraint to act and to move. Furthermore, free will and free action are related to the concept of human agency, where free actions are believed to have been rooted from the determination of the will and from the moral reasoning of every human person. A while ago, we learned the difference between free will and free action being the two expressions of human freedom. In here, it is emphasized how are these two expressions being associated with each other that both free will and free action are related to the concept of human agency in as much as free actions are rooted from the free will whether to act or not to act. But what is this concept known as human agency? The concept of human agency has developed a perspective known as faculties model, which refers to the free will as the use of our mental faculties. It assumes that we have free will due to our intellect and that each human action is based on rationality and sound judgment. To understand further, let us have an example. 
for instance, student deciding to participate actively in class to improve his or her grades indicates that he or she uses judgment to implement an action, thus exercising free will. This simply means that the student uses his intellectual faculty to make judgment for himself and act upon that judgment. This is a manifestation of human agency that every human person has both free will and free action that is freedom of the human person in a philosophical context. On another hand, freedom of the human person in a political and social context. Freedom or liberty has a great significance in how people participate in society. Every person has an individual freedom from oppression, compulsion, or coercion from other persons an authority figure or from society itself. On this premise, freedom of the human person in a political and social context is of three types. These are negative freedom, positive freedom, and moral freedom. Positive freedom refers to a person taking control of his or her own life and fulfilling one's potential. Negative freedom, on the other hand, is freedom from external restraint, barriers, and other interferences from other people. These definitions seem confusing as they sound to hold the same interpretation. So, to distinguish, let us be clear that positive freedom is otherwise known as freedom for, while negative freedom is otherwise known as freedom from. Negative freedom or freedom from means and implies restraints, which are interior or exterior. The interior obstacles are ignorance, disordered passions, desires, anger, fears, personality defects, bad habits, prejudices, or psychological disturbances. While the exterior obstacles are the violent forces or threats of violence and any external barriers and interferences such as prohibitions, laws, and other social controls, weather, accidents, poverty, etc. While positive freedom or the freedom for means and implies growth as a full person with the following levels. Level 1, the freedom of choice by which she or he directs his or her moral acts. And level 2, the fundamental freedom of his or her very self. The first level implies freedom to choose to act in this or that way, to do good or evil. While the second level refers to the consistency of choosing to do the good, which gradually makes him or her a free, loving person. Once again, positive freedom is freedom for, while negative freedom is freedom from. What about the third type, which is moral freedom? Moral freedom refers to using freedom in a manner that upholds human dignity and goodness. Freedom is not an object that a person may use in whatever way he or she pleases. So to speak, 
A person morally enjoys freedom when he or she uses freedom well, but becomes less free when he or she uses it in a bad way. As we have known, humans have a natural inclination for what is true and good. And when a person uses his or her freedom to do acts that violates human dignity and goodness, he or she dehumanizes himself or herself and effectively negates human freedom. This simply means that moral freedom can be enjoyed more or less depending on how a human person utilizes his or her freedom in a moral sense. The key takeaway from this lesson, freedom of a human person is generally perceived as a positive aspect of life, but we must enjoy it responsibly because individual freedom also has restrictions or constraints, limitations, and disadvantages. To recapitulate this lesson, let us remember that freedom can be understood in two contexts. In philosophical, it involves two human agencies, which are free will and free action. While in political and social contexts, it has three types, which are positive, negative, and moral freedom or liberty. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching and please consider subscribing.